The introduction scene says export controls, classifying your item. U.S. Department of Commerce Bureau of Industry and Security. In the next scene, a female character and male character are facing each other in a warehouse room, surrounded by boxes. I've determined my products are subject to the Export Administration regulations. Now what? The next step is to determine the classification of the item you want to export. By classification, I mean identifying the proper Export Control Classification Number, or ECCN. It's like the Rosetta Stone for the Export Administration regulations. Once you know the classification, the rest is simple. Well, simpler. An image of the Rosetta Stone appears on the screen and fades in the background. I know my HTS code and Schedule B number. Does that help? Unfortunately, it's not possible to determine an ECCN based on the HTS code or Schedule B number. So how do I get my ECCN? A screenshot of the BIS homepage appears on the screen that has a blue menu bar. The next few scenes show how to navigate through the BIS website as described by the female character. All ECCNs are found in the Commerce Control List, which is available on the Bureau of Industry and Security's website by hovering the mouse over Regulations from the blue menu bar, and selecting Export Administration Regulations from the drop-down menu. The web page changes to the Export Administration Regulations downloadable files, which has a chart of hyperlinks to each part of the EAR and category of the Commerce Control List. There are three ways to determine the export control classification number. You can self-classify, ask the manufacturer, or submit a classification request to the Bureau of Industry and Security. Before starting the self-classification process, one needs to understand the structure of an ECCN and the technical parameters of the item as most ECCNs are based on technical descriptions. It also helps to review the instructions in Part 738 of the EAR to learn how to use the Commerce Control List and read ECCN entries. An ECCN is a five-character alphanumeric code. The first character is a number from 0 through 9. This number stands for one of the 10 broad categories in the Commerce Control List. An ECCN 3A001 appears on the screen. The 3 is in blue with the word category above it. The A is in red with the word product group below it. The 001 is in green with the word specific entries next to it. A chart listing all 10 categories and descriptions appears on the screen. The second character is a letter A through E that indicates the type of item or product group. A chart listing all five product groups appears on the screen. Consider the third, fourth, and fifth characters as a sequential listing of different items within the category and product group. If your items are subject to the Export Administration regulations but not specifically described on the Commerce Control List, it likely falls into a basket category called EAR-99. A lot of consumer goods are designated EAR-99. The word EAR-99 appears on the screen. Images of a bag of groceries, clothing, a minivan, and a keyboard appear on the screen as examples of EAR-99 items. Maybe it would be helpful if we walk through an example or two. Well, I have a couple of diesel engines for farm equipment that I'd like to send to Mexico. Perfect! The first step is to determine which of the 10 categories you think the diesel engine would fall under. Any ideas? Hmm, not a clue. The word category and a question mark and the chart listing all 10 categories and descriptions appear on the screen. That's understandable. Let's take a look at the categories. Category 9 covers propulsion. That ought to be a good start. A check mark appears next to Category 9 on the chart. Now that we have the category, we need to determine the product group. The engine would seem to fit in the end item and equipment grouping, so it's likely to be in product group A. The chart listing all five product groups and descriptions appear on the screen. A check mark appears next to product group A on the chart. A screenshot of the beginning of category 9 of the EAR downloadable files appears on the screen. Now we can start reviewing ECCN entries at the beginning of 9A of the Commerce Control List. 
Here we go, 9A990, diesel engines. Well, my engines are far below the performance standards listed in A, B, or C. That's a great point. In reviewing ECCNs, you must read through the entire entry. If the ECCN contains a list of items controlled broken down into subparagraphs, it's important to read through these subparagraphs to determine if your item fits the parameters of the ECCN. In this case, we're looking at subparagraphs A, B, and C. Since your engines do not meet the technical specifications under these subparagraphs, that means your engines are not controlled under ECCN 9A990. Continue to check the remainder of Category 9A and any other applicable categories and product groups. If your items are subject to the Export Administration Regulations but not described in the Commerce Control List, then they would be designated EAR 99. The words EAR 99 appear on the screen with images of a bag of groceries, clothing, a minivan, and a keyboard as examples of EAR 99 items. Makes sense. I also have this cool optical sight I want to send to my uncle in Canada. On first glance, I don't see any categories that look right. If the optical sight is subject to the EAR, then take a look at Category 0. That includes miscellaneous items, too. The chart listing all 10 categories and descriptions appear on the screen, and miscellaneous items on the chart is circled in red. Looks like it would be in Product Group A. Here it is, 0A987. A screenshot of Category 0 appears on the screen. The page turns to 0A987 with 0A987 highlighted in yellow. Well done! Now you know the basics of how to self-classify an item. The BIS homepage appears on the screen. The next few scenes show how to navigate through the BIS website as described by the female character. The Bureau of Industry and Security has a decision tree tool on its website to assist with self-classifying items by clicking on the Exporter Portal link from the homepage. On the Exporter Portal, select Decision Tree Tools. CCL Order of Review is the first option on the list. The second way to get the ECCN is to contact the manufacturer or producer of the item. If the manufacturer has exported in the past, they might know the ECCN. Some companies have even made their classifications available on their websites. What if I'm going nowhere with self-classifying or the manufacturer has no idea? A screenshot of the BIS SnapR homepage appears on the screen. You can always submit an online request to the Bureau of Industry and Security to classify the item for you. To do this, you will need a SnapR account. This is the same system used for submitting license applications. How long does that take? The commodity classification process takes on average two to four weeks. You can include up to six line items per request, and there is no fee for a classification request. Once you know your ECCN, you're ready to determine if you have an export license requirement to export your products. I recommend watching Export Controls A Quick Start Guide for those steps. As always, the Bureau of Industry and Security's Office of Exporter Services is here to help. Please feel free to contact us if you have any further questions. Thank you and happy exporting! The last scene says U.S. Department of Commerce Bureau of Industry and Security with the website www.bis.doc.gov and the following phone numbers, Washington, D.C., 202-482-4811, Irvine, California, 949-660-0144, and the Enforcement Hotline at 1-800-424-2980.